Rumors for a new Nintendo Switch Pro have plateaued, and it seems that every day we're getting closer and closer to the real thing. Many of us want to see a more powerful Nintendo Switch Pro, because, let's be honest, the original Switch doesn't quite work as well as it should. So if they were actually to offer something in the future, what would that thing be that is actually worth buying? I love and hate my Nintendo Switch. It is fair to say that the Nintendo Switch does its job, which is what a game console should do, play games. But unlike other gaming consoles, the Nintendo Switch stands out in its own weird little unique way. You know, the, the processing, processing power of the hardware really doesn't matter. Oh boy. The Switch library is impressive, the games on it run and feel great, but only if they are made by Nintendo. Sometimes. You see, I'm so heavily frustrated by the Nintendo Switch's capabilities, both from a technical and casual standpoint. I have gotten so many third-party AAA games on the Switch, and it took me so long to realize that I should just never buy anything that I can get on another platform. The problems in these games range from ridiculously low frame rates to insanity-inducing longer-than-life loading screens. However, from the shadows, from the darkness of having to suffer 640p at 20 frames per second, comes the hope, dream, and possibility of a Nintendo Switch Pro. And no, I don't just want a Switch Pro to play Minecraft at a consistent 60fps. But let's get to the real question that everyone wants to know. What would make a Nintendo Switch Pro worth buying? To answer that, we have to look back at what the original Switch did that left us dissatisfied only to make us wanting more. And this first issue in the list is the one that bothers me the most. The one thing that no matter what game I'm playing, no matter where I'm playing it, so no matter just to tick me off every chance to get, I'm of course talking about low frame rates. Now, you don't need high frame rates for every game, but I'm only saying that lightly. You probably wouldn't care whether you were playing Tetris 99 at 30, 60, or 120 FPS. But the truth is that frame rate aids the visual experience and it will definitely impact your enjoyment of the game. One good example of this is something like a rhythm game, where you are constantly looking at your notes in relation to your area of effect. The higher the frame rate, the smoother the notes transition will look from one side of the screen to the other. The lower the frame rate, it's going to start to look like that one part from JoJo every time you try to hit a note. Animal Crossing New Horizons suffers from this. It's not a topic you see come up every now and then, surprisingly. This game runs at a generous 30 frames per second. Taking the visuals into consideration, this might seem like a fair trade-off, but nah, uh I ain't happy. This game is definitely a slow-paced one, but have you ever held the B button? Any amount of running and you will see for yourself the horrors of ghosting. What is ghosting? No, it's not what you do when you want to avoid human interaction. When your monitor displays images to create motion, it goes from one frame to the next. But the change doesn't happen immediately. No, your monitor needs time to change the color of the image so the next frame can happen. If this doesn't happen fast enough, you get these little weird watermark images that seem to fade a bit. The lower the frame rate, the worse it looks. But this also depends on your TV or monitor. Hell, my TV makes Animal Crossing look like it's running at 60 frames per second. Anyway, Animal Crossing is not even the worst case scenario. I present to you the lowest depiction of frame rate nightmare I have ever seen. Lego City Undercover. Running at a very unstable 30 frames per second with the occasional hiccup, it makes sense that such a big game would have such trouble running on the hardware. However, this game is actually a lot of fun and it's a great game due to its gameplay value. But that's not what this is about. While load times are very long, much like the Wii U version, you rarely come across one during gameplay, so this is hardly an issue. The real mess begins when you enter co-op oh. mode. The frame rate dips to even lower than the 30 FPS minimum to a horrendous 10 to 15 frames. I've tried playing co-op with someone before and all it accomplished was giving me a headache. Some might even consider it unplayable. And I love LEGO games for their co-op. I was someone that grew up with the Star Wars LEGO games and going from that to this was a serious case of whiplash. By the way, LEGO City Undercover is so great, I really recommend you to get it for the single player. It's funny, quirky, and all that good stuff. You should check it out. Why were you in his office? I'm trying to find my dad, Chase. What? Like in a filing cabinet? I need you to go to the office at my limo place. The burglar alarm has gone off. I would send Feng or Lee, but they're tied up at the moment. What about the old guy who works at your limo company? 
I had to fire him for being too familiar with me, which I regret as he's my father. <sighs> Look, I know I'm being very critical of the frame rate performance, but that's such a key thing for games, period. And it's not only Lego City, we have Minecraft, Cineblade Chronicles 2, the definitive edition of the first Cineblade Chronicles, Crash Team Racing, which has its own section, by the way, Dead by Daylight, Skyrim, the list goes on. Okay, we got the worst out of the way. Now we can talk about resolution. This one is easy. 4K isn't really necessary, and Nintendo knows that 4K isn't readily available to the masses. I know there's been rumors of Nintendo telling their developing partners to get their games quote-unquote 4K ready, but that doesn't sound too promising to me. 720p and above is where it should really be, and, and yes, games on the Switch do dip below that. So as long as the games stay at a consistent 60fps and 80p all throughout no matter the occasion, we will see happy faces all over. It's that simple. If 4K does happen, that's not bad. It's great for those of you who have the screens that can pull that off. However, I do believe we need to get a stable 1080, 60 FPS before jumping the gun to 4 freaking K. Just look at games like Xenoblade, where the average between 480p to 720p, please just, just fix that. Hardware. This thing is full of all kind of holes except for an Ethernet port, really. The hardware itself is honestly not bad. The Switch is a bit of a gimmick, but credit is due where it's due. The original is a little heavy in portable mode, but that's why they made the light. But is that really a Switch anymore, hmm? I mean, it doesn't Switch anymore. You're going to have to make a lot of improvements on the Switch's hardware, but this is where it gets complicated. Are they going to do the same thing as they did with the Switch Lite and limit it to one of the modes? If so, they would have to go for the exclusive docked mode. I mean, think about it. They can't get the power and the portability. They have to choose one. And the best way to do it is to have the Switch on a perpetually docked mode. Yes, there I said it. It sucks, but that's just the way it should be. Actually, over at Japan, Nintendo has sliced the price of Joy-Cons in half. This could very well indicate that either A, Nintendo is planning to make up for Joy-Con drift, or B, the new Switch Pro is coming and they're revising their design. The Joy-Cons are amazing, I love their concept, they're so chic, very light, yes, drip is a big issue, but some might also argue that the grip at the bottom could be better, or the buttons bigger. Okay, now listen closely because this is very important. If there is something that they should really change about the Joy-Cons, that something should be the plastic grip that holds the Joy-Con and the console together. If worn enough, which usually happens, it may straight up not even hold onto your Switch anymore and fall off. Yes, this is an actual problem. I don't have it, thankfully. Now, I know not everything I talk about here can or could be addressed, but I think I speak for a reasonable majority when I say that they should add a native Ethernet port onto the damn thing. I don't know how feasible this is or how it would affect the cost or anything like that, but it sure as hell is better than what we're currently doing right now. I'm on my third Ethernet adapter. Also, they should make all USB ports into 3.0 as well as making it so the software can actually use them. Apparently, it's been over three years and the USB 3.0 is still not supported on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, the 3.0 holes are there, the Switch just doesn't know what to do with them. If they are going to make these hardware changes, it is either now or never. Trust me. Speaking of too little too late, themes. The 3DS had them. Why not the Switch? Actually, it seems that the 3DS is still leagues above the Switch in terms of what cool things it offers despite it being a whole generation behind. Just look at the themes, the Badger Cave, Mi Plaza, Flipnote Studio. Nintendo is really good with their handhelds, but why stop there? Such a disappointment. The Switch had so much potential to make it all better, but for some reason we're stuck with jump rope? Let's not get started on the eShop. Yeah, it's a shovelware factory, but it doesn't even run smoothly. The only update I've seen done to it is the 35th anniversary update, and sometimes you might see Mario standing there on the loading screen like, Hey kid, want some shrooms? It would seem that the Switch frustrates more than it actually pleases. But with these new improvements, will we actually see it? a better outlook for all the games that are already in the Switch? I mean, they would probably have to retouch all the games. Let's talk a little bit about Crash Team Racing. I'm sure that the game itself is fine in other platforms, but on the Switch? Jesus. The screen filter, the frame rate, the loading screens. It's very clear that either the developer didn't give a rat's ass about the game being ported over, or the hardware was a legitimate challenge. I'm not entirely sure if any hardware changes may actually help this game. <laughs> Like I mentioned, they actually may have to retouch every game to run on the better hardware. In a perfect world, this might not be the case. The loading screens themselves take so long, and it's not like in LEGO City, you will very constantly find yourself in a loading screen whether you are playing online or offline. Just look at this, you have to be kidding me, I paid 60 bucks for this. If they can fix 
Crash Nitro Team Racing, they will have a good console on their hand. What will be a good price point for the Nintendo Switch Pro? I think $400, $300, maybe. I don't think they would keep it at the same price as they did before. But if they do, that would be worrying. As for the naming convention behind it, I would say maybe they could go for something cool like new Nintendo Switch Ultra or Pro. Seems like such a big deal that all the consoles are coming out now, so if this is enough pressure to put on Nintendo to release a better system, then by all means I hope that's the case. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It feels good when you do. I also stream on Twitch if you want to check that out. That's absolutely everything from me today, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Good night.